Hey family, you're tuning in to the Jimmy Bonds podcast on Philadelphia Radio. Pardon any technical difficulties as we are recording live on the Zoom platform. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Jimmy. Okay. Lights, camera, action. Some people thought I quit and I ain't giving satisfaction. From a different era, writing rhymes up on napkins. What you had to say was more important, man, than traffic. Yeah, I'm talking back. To, speaking of contemporary. What's good, family, and welcome to another episode of the Jimmy Bonds Podcast on Philadelphia Radio. This episode is sponsored by Good Hope Road Studios. I'm your host, Jimmy Bonds, along with my co-host, Ty T.Y. What's good, Ty? How you feeling? All good in the neighborhood, JB. Live from the 215. Live from the 215. You know how we do. You know I can't forget my other co-host, lovely Miss Lucy. What's up, Lucy? How you doing, mama? Lulu. I'm good after a long, long, long return. <laughs> long, long, long return. And we missed you. And we missed you. We missed you. <laughs> But welcome back. Welcome back, Mama. Remember, family, you can call us with your comments or questions at 844-844-1244. Again, it's 844-844-1244. You can also email us at jimmybondspodcast at gmail.com. Again, it's jimmybondspodcast at gmail.com. It's J-I-W-M-Y-B-O-N-D-S podcast at gmail.com. Also, family, remember, you can follow us on Instagram at Jimmy Bonds Podcast, on Twitter at Podcast Bonds. Make sure you join the Jimmy Bond Podcast Facebook group. Let's continue to open a dialogue. Also, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels at Jimmy Bonds Podcast on YouTube, as well as at Philadelphia Radio YouTube. Moving right along, family, tonight, 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 we have a very special, special topic. I am filled with glee, happy about this, family. This is going to be dope. But tonight, we're discussing the most important thing sometimes, I, I would say. But it's a conversation. And this is a conversation about the Black woman experience. And with that being said, normally what I would do is introduce all the guests and they'll, you know, go through the promo. But tonight, I think we're going to let the guests introduce themselves. So with that being said, let's kick it off. We have a full panel tonight, family. So let's go from let's go from the wisdom to the youngest. So Mama Velma, you can kick it off. Definitely tell the family about yourself, your name, where you at, all that good stuff. Please come on in. Come on in. Hello, my name is Alicia Velma Jackson. Uh, I know J- Jimmy, from when he was younger. Uh, I, I'm an elder in my 70s. Um, I guess with wisdom, comes, with, with experience comes wisdom. Uh, I'm a mother of three, a grandmother of five, uh, a teacher, a Reiki master, a yoga instructor, and a keeper of the culture. That's what Amen. I am. Amen. And a catalyst that brings people together. The catalyst that brings people. That's what I'm talking about. It's all about bringing people together. That's all we, that's, that's what we need more of that and less of, of, of the hate and the division. So, yes. you know, yes. what you, what you do, I should tell you, Mama Velma has known me since I was about six. So I call her Mama Velma because literally she is one of my mothers. So I am, <laughs> she is definitely somebody who's known me. She wanted to use my government name, but we're not we're just going to keep it right there. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> moving right along let's move on to somebody that i see on a daily basis i call her my younger sister she's like my younger sister but salima what's up salima how you doing mama hey i'm good how are you doing well doing well welcome to the show tell you Thanks tell you know tell you, it's super dope super dope <laughs> but you know definitely tell you tell the family about you and all that good stuff where you at all that good stuff so I'm Salima. I'm 25. Um, like Jay said, I see him every day at work. Love seeing him in the morning. Um, I am a mommy of a set of twins, a boy and a girl set. They are six years old. And then I have a awesome little two-year-old. We share the same birthday, but I honestly, I don't know if we're the same person because she is a handful. I don't know where she came from, but yeah, that's my little mini me. She's two. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So we've got, we got to have the mamas on here because we got to talk a little bit about that love too. It, that's, love it. It's a, that's a whole, that's a whole nother ball game. You know, you know what I know about the being, I'm not a mama, but uh, I'm a daddy. So I understand, understand. Salima, thank you, mama. Greatly appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank and then you. I'm going to go. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, you, you could not miss this. When we first talked about it, I was like, I, I was so intrigued. You know, I had to come bring my other half of me with me. <laughs> listen, you had to. You had to. And move right along. We have another guest, Miss Imani. Imani, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I just want to know 
you know, tell the family a little bit about you. Like, you know, where you from, all that good stuff. How you, you know, what you doing, what you what you up to. Welcome yeah. to the show, definitely. Yeah, thank you uh, for having me as well. I'm Selena's best friend. Um, I live in Pittsburgh right now, but I grew up in Philly. And I just have a lot of experience being a Black woman, a student of life. Yeah, and just a lot of strong opinions. Yeah, I'm just happy to help and provide my point of view. And and that's that's what's important because perspective is important. You know, I thought it was I thought it was vital to get a vast array of different women. Not everybody in the same age bracket. Not everybody you know doing the same thing. Not in the same career mode. Not in the same place. Like I just thought the variations was key because black women are different. Every single one of them. <laughs> and as much as they try to bulk black women together, they are different. And there's there's a vast variety and, and difference in them. So. I wanted to make sure we got all perspectives in. So Imani, thank you for joining us. Greatly appreciate this. Last but not least, last but not least, all the way from the ATL, all the way from the ATL, <laughs> ATL chocolate drop. Should I get a drum roll for this one? Uh, listen, miss, <laughs> all the way from the ATL. I thought I thought she was going to cut me off at one point. But this is my lady, my girl. Greatly appreciate her joining on. Miss Tiffany Real, She Real Radio. What's up, Tiff? How you doing, mama? Hey, everybody. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Listen, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Tiffany has an extensive track record with this. You know, she knows that I'm not going to go do that. for Tiffany, welcome to the show. Tell the people about yourself because I could go on about you. So one, I'm Tiffany Real. I am a mother of seven, three grandchildren and an ex-husband. Whoop, whoop. Um, my 49th <laughs> birthday is what two this days Friday, away? Yes. 11 11 Wakanda <laughs> forever yes um I am definitely pro-black I don't play when it comes to black people especially the black man I don't play because I have three sons I love my people and like Jimmy Bond's podcast said and yes I do call him Jimmy Bond's podcast so don't be saying why she keep saying podcast because that's his name that's his name um What's up, Ty to Rhyme? What's up, Ty to Rhyme in the building? What's up? <laughs> What's going um, on, Chocolate Chip? <laughs> so, um, I am the owner, founder of She Real Radio in Atlanta, and I have a lot of different programs. And I love Jimmy Bond's podcast. And um, I don't know what else to say. Well, listen, you ain't, ain't got to say no more. You, you, you know. said enough. You, you know said enough already. You even said yeah. enough. Well, listen, you know I love you, Mama. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Kicking it off, family. I want to thank all the guests for joining us tonight. But I want to break down a segment how we're going to do this. The first segment will be on career, black women, black woman's career. The second segment will be on relationships, and the third segment will be on colorism. So let's kick this right off. And and anybody can jump in. You can jump in at any time. I'm you know you can I ask questions. We'll chime in. We'll just we'll knock it out. But as far as speaking about career, so the first question I really wanted to find out just from different different perspectives was, you know, what are the trends that a black woman, a black woman rather, faces in her career on a daily basis? Like in today's workforce, because it's different. As a matter of fact, we have different people in different arenas and industries on, on the panel. So, you know, what is it? What's it like? Like what what is it that we don't know that, you know, you women face? And that you can't necessarily take the HR or even speak about it, you know, openly. Like, what what is it, Tiff? I see you raising your hand. What's good? I think that in most professions, women are sexually harassed almost on a daily basis. Okay. And if we were to report each time we were sexually harassed, we would still be doing it right at this very second. Because it happens all the time. And it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your body type. If you're a woman and you got a hole, somebody's going to be trying to jump in it. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) listen, I mean, you you ain't said it wrong. Mama Velma, what you feel about that? I agree with Tiffany. Uh, I'm I'm 74 and I joined the workforce back in the 60s. uh, And it still goes on today uh, as far as sexism, Uh, and sometimes you have to pick your battles. I was talking about this on a family Zoom, the other things about things that happened to me. I'm retired from Library of Congress as a serials librarian. I was taught by my mother to be vigilant and don't allow any man 
to disrespect me. And that's how I've always carried myself. I'm, I consider myself a woman king and a woman warrior. I've always been a woman warrior. So, and that's how I raised my three daughters. Um, I've had to put people in my place at the workplace at the Library of Congress be, due to sexual harassment, due to uh, due to sexual harassment. We'll talk about colorism later. Uh, and then you have to pick your battles because like she said, taking it to HR, I could have taken my situation to HR, but I handled it right there on the spot because all the other women in my office were accepting what was happening to them. And so I'd be standing out by myself because they weren't going to stand up and they were married, mm -hmm. no children, et cetera, et cetera, but they weren't going to stand up for what was going on. So what I chose to do was to re remove myself from that particular situation. And what, what happened is that particular person who was second in command at the Library of Congress at the time, when I was working for him, he wasn't. He was the director of a department. Then he became second in command. He would follow me wherever I was just to say hello. But what I really found out is he wasn't sure whether I was going to report him or not because he knew my personality. you know. And he even took me and grabbed me at a, at a retirement party across the room. Yeah, took me across the room and introduced me to the librarian of Congress at the time and said, I want you to see her. Mm. And that, that that's code talk. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's definitely code and talk. I'm not stupid. That's code talk, you yeah. know, because I don't play. You know, the other people, oh, they grin and they skin and they, oh, we just don't tell our husbands. No, I don't play that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's, sexism has been going on. I had it happen to me in the dentist chair. Mm. I had it to happen to me walking down the street, going to going to school, you know, men falling, walking behind me. And, you know, I had it when we were playing as kids, you uh -huh. know, boys would grab you by your breast, uh -huh. you know, and all kinds of things. So, yes, it's been going on for a long time and even within your own, you know, uh -huh. and that's what yeah, yeah. see this. This, this, is, this is the stories I wanted to get. Selena, you uh -huh. want to say something? Yeah, I feel like just touching on the HR topic, I feel like definitely as black women when it comes to like talking to HR I feel like a lot of us are like um we don't want to in a sense like they don't take us serious like if we were a white woman yeah this would be prosecuted to the fullest extent but as black women it's like it's not a big deal or like get over it or the person is still in their their authority or whatever position they're in I feel like as black women we are we're not we don't easily feel safe to just go to HR. Like that's not a, that's not a safe zone for us when it should be, but it's not for white women. Of course, I feel like they, at that, anytime they're going for something, had that outlet, oh, HR. But for us, I don't feel like we have that. Salima, do you think that is more like, so like, a, um, they think like black women are more so sensitive to everything that comes up? Like, you know how when it comes to yeah. us, like, we could say the same thing, like you said, a white mm -hmm. girl would say. And then when we say it, sometimes our, the way we probably say things is a little bit more to the point. It's not passive, it's direct. But I feel like with when it comes to corporate and white world, it's like, oh, she's just being sensitive. Like, I feel like when they look at us, it's more so that we're more so sensitive to everything that comes up. Like, we try to escalate uh -huh. everything. Yeah, I feel like it's that. And I also feel like they just don't care. Like, mm -hmm. I just feel like they just sweep it under the rug and basically expect us to just get over it. Or they, they might write up paperwork and stuff to make it seem like they're taking the initiative to do something. And it's not really that. Well, I would like to say that, you know, since we came off the boat, we have been looked at as sexual objects. And we're always being objectified in music and television and movies and stuff like that. So when people see us, unfortunately, most people see sex. So therefore, when we're being harassed and mistreated and stuff like that, they look at it, oh, they probably like it or, you know, they're complaining because they're upset with the person or whatever. They don't really see us as human beings. I have a 25 year old daughter and two years ago she came to me and she said, mom, you know, men really don't see us. They just see us as objects. And she's 25. She was 23 at the time. And even she recognized that as a young girl. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, we were groomed to be looked at as nothing but 
um, sexual objects. It even goes back to back in the day, Sarah Bartman, she had a big butt and stuff like that. And she was put in human zoos, put on display like an animal and people would have sex with her, fill her up with diseases and stuff like that. And she died at an early age because she was just an object and it hasn't really changed much. May I make a yeah? I was gonna say, okay. Monty, how you feel? Well, go ahead. May I make a correction to that? That's the this is the fallacy we have because in the office that I worked in, it was white women and black women being harassed. There was no discrimination, and even though I stand for who we are as black people, that's who I was born, etc. But we need to understand the African term: the ruins of a nation begins in the homes of its people. It did not start when we were enslaved. We were mistreated. And the woman king is not, the movie was not a lie. We were mistreated as women in Africa. Women are mistreated all over. Women are mistreated all over the earth in every country. We are subjectified, you know, Mm -hmm. and we need to be honest about that. You know, just not blaming it on slavery and pointing the finger. We need to be honest about it. It's been happening to us for a long time. Yeah, and that's and that's true. But you know what? I'm black. So the only person I really care about is the black woman because the black woman is always at the bottom of the totem pole. We always get kicked in the ass first, <laughs> second, third, and fourth. And yes. those you know, people, I always put my people first above everybody else. It's always cool to say all lives matter and stuff like that. But don't nobody give a F about the black people except us. So therefore, that's my only focus. No, I agree. I agree with everyone. I feel like all women are oppressed. Black women are more oppressed. And I feel like um, in terms of like the objectification of us, it comes off like we're not perceived as worthy of um, having being hurt or like being um, not strong or feeling some type of way or bringing up being assertive as a man would and it being perceived as like oh she's so like aggressive if a man were to do it it would be like oh he's so like powerful in the uh like the what is it called like the room where you have like meetings and stuff um so yeah like I think it's just a difference in how we're being perceived but especially as black women we are thought of way less and like I feel like we aren't perceived to have real feelings worthy of like um, compassion or that we don't feel the same pain that a white woman who is also being oppressed feels like they have more care period in society in Mm. a higher regard in my opinion Mm. I mean all all y'all said some real profound stuff I'm I'm yeah I'm just gonna be quiet I think what <laughs> I think what Imani said is it definitely correlates with HR. Like that's like when you bring up stuff to HR, like I mentioned, they don't think we're worthy of that type of compassion. That's why it just gets sweeps sweeped under the rug. And that's why most of the time us as black women, we don't feel comfortable in, in our work environment to say anything. Sometimes most women suffer through the stuff that they going through or the stuff that they endure in their workforce. When I worked in transit, I went to labor relations and I was told, well, what are you going to do? Because the environment's not going to change. They're still going to be here. They're still going to have their job. So what are you going to do? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have to work in in this type of environment. And the thing is, they protect these males. And then, you know, Mm -hmm. their infractions are swept under the rug. But guess what? They get to go to other jobs. And then one of my superiors was arrested for trying to molest a disabled 11-year-old boy. But that would have never happened if they didn't sweep it behind, uh, you know. And even then, the Black wasn't woman wasn't protected. It was the child that was protected. Mm-hmm. So, And it's, it's sad that you have to choose whether you want to endure this behavior or leave your job. Like, mm-hmm. you shouldn't have to choose your, your income over any type of behavior that's not okay like if I'm reporting this to you why are you making me choose between the two mm-hmm. and that's something we endure every day it's almost like in a workplace the the attitude is especially for black women like be grateful that you're here or you have the opportunity 
and like yeah just be grateful or like shut up and just take it and don't complain because like you have the most to lose like you can't afford to not have this job I'd like to say in my experience um and even though I didn't get the particular grade that I should have finished with I did not I wasn't told to be quiet. Uh, Many times when I stood up for what I needed to stand up for, I was respected and um, I got what I needed, et cetera. I have to admit though, that um, it's the flavor of the, of the society, the society period, as far as women are concerned, as far as black women are concerned, But we're at a time in the universe from a spiritual standpoint that women are coming into their own and not to become above men, but in balance and in harmony with each other. And it's not only for women to get in touch, but it's also for men to get in touch with the feminine aspect of themselves, because all of us are male and female. All of us came from male and female. And it's to bring it's to get in touch with the compassion for ourselves, compassion for each other, and respect for each other. And if you pay attention to the climate around the world, it may not be changing fast enough, but from 74 years to now, it's changing. And it is, times are changing. And what people have to do is they have to stand. You know, I had no problems with telling my supervisor that she was a racist. I had no problems with telling my supervisor they were racist. Yes, I may have gotten penalized, but I stand on who I am. And we have to be able to stand on who we are regardless of the consequences. And the more of us that stand together, the more things will change. You know, I talk about that a lot on my show, Morning Quickie, Mm -hmm. and my other shows. You know, the problem is with us as a whole, and I'm talking about Black people. I don't care about nobody else is that we have where we become comfortable. So mm-hmm. when you become comfortable, you think that you're free. Mm-hmm. It's no different from the house Negro per se. Mm-hmm. They might've been raped, but they had cleaner clothes. They ate better food. You know what I'm saying? They, li- they were in the house. They didn't have to endure the elements outside like the others. So when it was time to flee, they like, what, what were we leaving for? Like, <laughs> It ain't that bad. You know what I'm saying? And because we're able to live where we want to live, work where we want to work, make what we want to make and have the things that we want to have in our minds, we feel like that's freedom compared to what our people had to endure. But just because we're not being hosed Mm -hmm. and just because we're not having dogs bit and sick on us and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, it doesn't mean that we're not free. We're still in bondage. Mm -hmm. But now not only are they having us in bondage because they know how to keep us in bondage because they study us. They play chess. They don't play checkers. They know the things that we're drawn to. And that's how they're able to keep us in bondage mentally. Mm -hmm. And then we turn against each other because Mm -hmm. we're trying to live in a system that wasn't even designed for us in the first place. I agree with you because I think um, something Cicely Tyson said, um, before a few years before she died, she made the comment that our generation failed the future generation, meaning that once integration came in, so-called integration came in, my generation, for the most part, became comfortable because they had their degrees and they could do this, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. They had the houses, they had the cars. Mm-hmm. And I fought a lot for my children and my friends, my friends. Even my parents, uh, they didn't want to hear that because they got what they thought they fought for, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they didn't want to talk about it. So I was the odd person out. Uh, Jimmy, I was getting ready to say another name. Jimmy's mother was the odd person out because they did not want to hear what we had to say. And, you know, like, oh, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. No, we, we're free now. And we, we're, we're not free. We're not free. I mean, you are, uh, listen, I'm, I'm just, I'm struck by the whole conversation. I'm, I'm struck by the, the, the different perspectives. I'm kind of, it's kind of like one of them things where like, you know, you know, it exists, but you don't know the real aspect of it. You know, you don't understand, you don't understand what, what reality is for black women. And I think each and every one of you have really spoken to that, that point. 
So, Lucy, I mean, mm-hmm. what do you think about what everybody was saying, Lucy? No, I agree. I just feel like, especially when it comes to like, you know, corporate America, for me, is a little bit, in a sense, different. Like, I feel like when I make a complaint or something, I feel like because in my corporation, I'm just going to be completely honest, it's a male driven corporation. But the people who are in higher power are women. So for me, it's a little bit different. So if I say mm-hmm. something, it is swept under the rug. It's like I'm being emotional. I'm being sensitive in that same like regard. But I feel like, I don't know if this is bad to say, but I feel like it's so expected that I'm not even willing to even try to tell. Like, so you're, I'm just, you're, you're, I just know that they're going to sweep it under the rug. So what's the point of just me getting mad? I'm going to just do my work and just go home. And, and it and, shouldn't be like that. Yeah. Yeah, but in my society, it's like if I complain, it's like beating a dead horse. Like no and result. Can I just say this too, because it probably is because I've worked for different companies, and I was told from the jump, if you don't sleep with a certain amount of people at that place, then you're not a part of the company. Because that's what they that's what they do. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. That's yeah. the, that's the climate. That's so you probably got people at your job, Lucy, the big wigs, they probably done had whoever they wanted to have and stuff like that. That's probably the climate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was the climate. That was the climate at the Library of Congress. It was, I mean, it was the climate there. Uh, I, I just didn't play that ga- those games. I was even asked, uh, oh, Alicia, you can have anything you want. Why do you fight so much? And I mm-hmm. said, because I, I said, I don't go that way. I said, I don't play that, yeah. you know. And can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Um, so you said that it was like, you know, you're in a workforce in the 60s, right? For me, I feel like now we're in a climate that we're not going to take stuff and we're going to be more vocal. So I'm that. really surprised, like back then, like people were vocal. Like I would think like they'll just not no, want to be like I the was fact vocal. that you said your boss is a racist, I'm like taken aback because if I said that in my I would be crucified. So I, it's like commendable to even hear that. Yeah, I was vocal, but a lot of people around me weren't. And I was considered, oh, Lisa, you need to close your mouth. Or um, this one Asian woman who I thought we were friends at one point, um, she came to me one day and she said, oh, Alicia, she said, "Um, now I see why, uh, um, why you are the way you are. She said, because I saw the color purple. Wait a minute. So I said, Shirley, what did you say? She said, because I saw the color purple. She said, and I saw, I said, let me tell you something, Shirley. That is not every Black woman's experience, and it is not my experience. (sighs) You know, I told, I was in Connecticut for four weeks, and I told them that it was like a plantation. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys said, shh. Don't say that because there's cameras in here. I said, I don't give a F about no doggone cameras. It's like right. a plantation in here. What yeah. they gonna do? Yeah. Send me home? Yeah. Die? Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? You can't you can't be afraid to speak on anything, you know? And no. I was no. always one like you. I think I was born in the wrong decade. Cause I'm like you, Ms. Jackson. I'm a fight. I'm a fight. Yeah, I'm fighting to the end. Period. I'm a fight because at the end of the day, you got to look yourself in the mirror every day and you got to be happy That's with right. what you see. That's right. And how can you teach your when your daughters and even your sons to be strong men and women if you're weak? No. Thank you. That's not Mm-mm. an option. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's I real. think those points are important. Like, I agree. Um, it also speaks to the fact that we have such a lack of community nowadays because it's very hard to be the only one that's tough oh believe me it's rough it's rough yeah. like we know <laughs> but that just speaks to like the lack of sometimes you seem so like alone togetherness. yeah and I think if we had more of those things um like back in the 60s when a lot of um black organizations was coming together we would have more support and like security and reinforcements and respect and dignity amongst ourselves and each other but I think because we got quote-unquote integrated um it just took away that power that we had of togetherness and like every family just became nuclear and we just had to fend for ourselves and now it's like now I gotta be tough every day and fight off the white Mm -hmm. man 
and like this whole corporation and like what's the consequence of that of being tough all the time and having no support like it's cool to do what you got to do to get by in a day but it also I think we should talk about or get emphasis on the community that we don't have and we desperately need amongst each other I, I mean I totally agree we need community I um just before I left the Library of Congress, I went to OEO office to, to make a complaint to a black woman who was a, blo- a black woman OEO officer who mm-hmm. I thought would have my back and not, you know, not special favors, but have my back. And I said, you know, I need to know what to do to file a complaint in this office, you know, about, about my, um, about what's going on where I work. And you know what she said to me? Do whatever they tell you to do. Ooh. And I did like, I know you didn't say that because I know the kind of person you are. What? She said, do whatever they tell you to do. All, and I wasn't even telling her what was happening. I told her, I need to know the process so I can file a complaint. And that, and I totally lost respect for her at that point. And I said, that whole OEO office system, I just totally lost. And I lost totally total respect because I, did, I didn't have this. She didn't even know what I was going to say. She had no idea. I hadn't even gotten a chance to get to that point. Uh, Ms. Jackson, is that how you want to be referred to? Like referred as Ms. Jackson? You can call me Ms. Jackson. You can call me Mama Vilma. It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm curious to know, like, a lot of women that you speak about in your environment was very different from you in terms of their beliefs and how they um set well, up. this particular person was a black power um mm-hmm. activist she still is she's married to a person who I won't even call any names <laughs> and i mean it, and i it, it shocked the heck out of me i just went like what the heck is this about you know right what do you think made you so um my mother raised me, yeah. my mother raised me, never let no man, never let no man. And I don't know what they had to do with whatever happened to her, you know, and she t- always raised me to stand for who I am. And I've done that all my life, all my life. Um, and even like I said, some of my best friends, uh, they they kind of move away when I go into the warrior woman, you know, because somebody's got to do it. You know, somebody's got to do it. I just get a little bit hurt because it's not enough support. We don't have enough support because people are afraid, you know, afraid of losing their material things. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Afraid of you losing their material things. You know, I've lost a lot in my lifetime, but that's all they were, were material things. I have not lost my dig- my dignity of who I am, you know, and I will never, you know. Mm-mm. You know, I always say when you're a child, you have to listen to the people who raise you. When mm-hmm. you're an adult, the only one you have to answer to is your God. Whatever mm-hmm. that is, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I tune into the universe. I've been on my own since I was 15 years old. And I feel like my ancestors, they rock with me hard. Yes. You know, I've never been in situations. There's situations where I probably should have been killed or, you know, hurt. But I always had that armor around me. And mm-hmm. I believe in that. So mm-hmm. nobody's going to stop me from saying what I want to say, even mm-hmm. if it hurts, offends or whatever. Because mm-hmm. no, nobody care about offending or hurting me. No, you know what I'm saying? And look, I did all this fighting against systems and I'm still here. And you, I always win when I was at those companies and I fought against them and they suspended me for no reason because they don't like my mouth. They told me, oh, you'll never move up because Mm -hmm. you don't, you're you're not with the system. Whenever they suspended me, I filed a grievance. I fought for myself. I always won. Give me my money and Mm -hmm. take that suspension out my folder. You know what I'm saying? You cannot be afraid of human beings no. when you claim to be believe in some type of creator. No. If God has your back, can't nobody beat you. 
Mm, and yes. it may seem like you losing in the beginning, but ultimately you always win. And if you believe that, then you don't need a crowd of people around you. Mm, I fight you every day from man, woman, and child, black first. Yeah. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do I want us to be a kumbaya society where we love each other and all that? Of course. Mm-hmm. But we can't do that with other people if we can't even do it with our own selves. With, with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And, and on that note, family, we're going to take well. a quick break. Yeah, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm over here in awe. Like, yeah, go get it. Go get it. Mm-hmm. On that fact, we're going to take a quick break. Remember, you can call us with your comments and questions at 844-844-1244. Again, that's 844-844-1244. You can also email us at jimmybondspodcast at gmail.com. Again, that's jimmybondspodcast at gmail.com. It's J-I-M-M-Y-B-O-N-D-S podcast at gmail.com. You listen to the Jimmy Bonds Podcast on Philadelphia Radio, the Indie Station for the Indie Nation, the Black Woman Experience. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Mecca from Upper Darby. This is the Jimmy's Balls Podcast on Every Day Fair Radio. Is, is it on? I said it's the Michael. It is okay, all right, yeah. This is Reverend CC Chicken Wing. And I love listening to the Jimmy Balls Podcast. Insightful, thoughtful words that uplift the people and bring up knowledge to Thank the people. So That's the brother Jimmy Bonds right there. You can reach out to the brother too at the Jimmy Bonds Podcast at gmail.com. This is Reverend CC Chicken Wink. Uh, yeah, uh, is the mic still on? Is it on? Okay, I'm sure. That's going to wrap the show. We want to thank you for listening to Jimmy Bond's podcast on Philadelphia Radio. We ask you to leave your comments and questions at 844-844-1244. Again, that's 844-844-1244. You can also email us at jimmybondspodcast at gmail.com. Again, that's jimmybondspodcast at gmail.com. That's J-I-M-M-Y-B-O-N-D-S podcast at gmail.com. Now, remember, family, we are still in a COVID-19 pandemic. So please, please, please remember to wash your hands, wear a mask, and practice social distancing. Also, remember to take nothing for granted and value every opportunity you have with your friends, your family, and your loved ones. For in these times, every moment is sacred. So until the next episode, you can find me on Good Hope Road, screaming, stay up, don't sleep in your dreams. I'm Jimmy Bonds, and I'm out. Fight on. Come on. Get on. Get on.